Welcome to the Moonflower Path Podcast. This space is for the highly sensitive, the creatives, the earth loving, the caregivers, the weirdos, the feelers, the change makers, and dreamers of the world. Here, we are all about guiding you to trust your body intuition so you can find home and shift culture. Through the exploration of somatic practice, self-care, and seasonal ritual, my hope is that you will be inspired to be in harmony with yourself and in a dance with the earth. I'm your host, Carolyn, and I'm so honored and grateful to be here with you today. Hello, 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 Moonflower. Hoping you are well and that your entrance into spring hasn't been too turbulent. (laughs) Transitions, the in-between, it's always a really weird experience, isn't it? Like even just looking at the way that the weather is during seasonal transitions. Um, My wife just this morning was like, I feel like the weather doesn't really know what it's doing these days. And I'm like, yeah. So, (laughs) so it's okay if we feel a little like bleh, (laughs) but I feel like the transitional seasons, so spring and fall are often the most like scrumptious ones, right? They, they have this, like I talked about in the, the spring equinox episode, they have this sort of like balancing kind of like tamer feeling to them once the dust settles. Um, I know for like most folks, like either spring or fall is their favorite season. So how has the beginning of your season been? How are you nourishing your body? How are you giving space for your mind to be heard? No shame, no guilt needed in answering these questions. I know that you're doing the best that you very can right now. I see you and I'm celebrating you no matter where you're at these days. Before we get into today's episode, I'd like to gently remind you of the happenings in our world over here. The new website was recently published, containing all the cozy resources for you, dear Moonflower. All the links to past podcast episodes, the YouTube channel containing over 100 free cozy and accessible yoga practices, and all the information you would need to see if the upcoming new community space is for you. So as a reminder, the Moonflower Path Community Space, which opens on April 17th, programming will start officially on May 1st in time for the mid-spring celebration of Beltane, is going to be filled with somatic self-care resources and community vibes to help you feel supported, connected, and inspired to truly take up space as the wonderful, sensitive, creative, and earth-loving soul that you are. This new space is about reminding you that you don't need to change the way that you are in order to create the beautiful impact you are meant to share. We do that through embodied, intuitively led, and earth-connected ways in community. This is about remembering that just because you might be, quote, overly emotional or move a bit slower or need quiet spaces or gentler ways of being or more heart-centered approaches doesn't mean you can't take up space in this big, fast, loud, and extractive world. In fact, it's the very fact that you are a moonflower that you are needed in this world. And we can't pour from an empty cup, lovely. So we practice self-care, honor our intuition, care for our bodies in loving ways, and come home to ourselves so we can walk back into the world, radiate love, care, and integrity. Okay, so that's my little like standing on a pedestal talk. If this lights you up, I urge you to put your name on the waitlist. The waitlist exists for two reasons. One, if you're not already registered to our newsletter, then this will be the simple way to do that because it's truly the space I share the most and that you get the most free support. And two, because it will give me an idea of the folks that are interested in the membership. It's just, it'll be helpful for me. Um, For a limited time, when the doors open on April 17th, there will be founding member discounted pricing that will never be offered again because as the membership grows, as the resource library grows, its value grows. So we'll be growing together and I'd like to honor the folks that are there at the very beginning at the seed planting time. So to ensure that you don't miss the deadline to become a founding member, you want to be receiving our newsletters. So go and do that right now. While you're listening, you can do it. 
um, click on the link in the show notes, go over, put your name on the wait list if you aren't already, and we'll get into our episode as you're doing that. So in today's episode, I wanted to share my experience as a highly sensitive person, as well as ways to thrive as an HSP. I learn really well by hearing other people's experiences instead of being offered like advice based off of their own experience, but just hearing other people's experiences so I can pick and choose what resonates with me. And I also learn well from people's stories instead of just like the facts, <laughs> the research. So instead of solely talking about the highly sensitive person like terminology from a research standpoint, I wanted to share also about my own experience and coming to this label and how it has truly helped me feel feel whole because that is what I want for you. I want you to feel enough loved and whole exactly as you are. So this is, this episode is going to feel kind of vulnerable. Like I'm like feeling like a little like Ooh, about sharing because, well, there are some folk in my life that have actually like rolled their eyes at my identifying at being highly sensitive. And I have had some pretty shitty experiences in my life associated with being who I am. And not to say that I'm the only person who has experienced that we all have, and I also would like to recognize the privilege that I do hold in being an able-bodied, cisgendered, white individual walking through the world. So I'm not, I don't want this to become like a, um, like a suffering comparison. Um, this is me just speaking from my own experience and that I would like to use the privilege that I do have in the body that I do have to be able to share what I have learned and the resources that have helped me to be able to hopefully create a beautiful ripple effect. So all that to say that uh, what I'm going to share is feeling a bit tender and I'm grateful for you holding space and I hope that my sharing is going to be supportive and helps really inspire you if you resonate with some of the words that I share. So when I was a kid in my home, in the safety of my own home, we were celebrated and loved. I am so incredibly grateful for my parents, for my family. Um, some of the folks that are probably going to be listening to these episodes, like I know that my mom listens to these episodes. I know that my aunt does. <laughs> I heard that my, my parents listened to some of the podcast episodes when they first came out and I was like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Um, so anyways, if, if you're listening, here we are, but truly like we were, we were loved and truly encouraged to be our full selves. We were invited to share our opinions. We were given space to feel our feelings and we were encouraged to just be ourselves. Basically. I mean, obviously it wasn't always rainbows and butterflies and I'm speaking solely from my own experience, not my siblings experience. So when you've got three kids being raised to be their full selves, that will come with kids with pretty big personalities. And of course that meant heads budding, but overall in my house, my personal experience of growing up was a loving one. Yet the parts where I truly struggled were when I was out in the world, right? So learning in the safety of my own home that it is safe for you to speak your mind. It is safe for you to be vulnerable. It is safe for you to be sensitive. It is safe for you to be honest, open, caring, loving, wear your heart on your sleeve, and then walking out into the world and realizing that that's not actually most people's reality, not the way that the majority of the world is constructed, was like a rude awakening. It created this like really contradictory, contradicting experience. In middle school, or like the end of elementary school, like we don't really call middle school here. Um, I, I went to French school. Uh, so like the end of elementary school and in high school, I was bullied and experienced some really challenging moments with classmates. See, being passionate, being given space to be you, to feel your emotions, to speak your mind, isn't really something that is celebrated in our society. Yes, it is in theory, <laughs> in theory, but in practicality, it rubs people the wrong way. And when you're 
a child still figuring out how to be you, how to actually speak up and be you and take up space in a way that doesn't like rub people the wrong way, that doesn't suck all the air from the room. It's not a smooth experience. So I was outspoken. I had a very low tolerance for for bullshit. I was honest. I didn't really like just letting wrongness, meanness, lacking in integrity just pass and go unnoticed or uncalled out, um, which is rampant in high school, right? There's a lot of fakeness. Um, At least there was when I was a kid. A lot of just having to follow the societal rules, whether that be in like stupid dress code rules or dealing with toxic teachers or navigating the messed up social high school student hierarchy amongst your peers. So I, I called people out. I told it like it is. And it came off as, well, bitchy, sassy, troublesome, quote, too much, and just very unwelcomed. See, being caring, loving, passionate, and noticing a lot more than others, so being aware of a lot more than others, is soft and wonderful on the inside, and it's beautiful in theory, but it isn't really received very well. And if not offered or vocalized properly, (laughs) it creates a hard outer shell. At least it did for me. Because people didn't like me calling them out if they were being mean. So they were mean back, which then made it such that I acted sassier and bitchier in response. It was like this like weird experience of noticing like when things were wrong and then speaking up and saying something from a place of of care, of love, of depth, of feelings, but not doing it effectively and that it then created like in other people, like people, people didn't like what I had to say. And now as a grown up realizing like, oh, like just because you don't like what I have to say, like you don't like that I am noticing that things are not okay, that that you're not acting in a way that is kind to others, just because you don't like that I have something to say about that, that's like not an emotion that I have to hold for you. That's not something that we're taught or that we learn as kids, right? And so it turned into this situation where people thought that I was too much or that I was like, yeah, that I was too much. That was a very common occurrence um, or that I was a bitch. And so I started believing it. And then I started acting in that way. I started like it created this like really crusty outer shell of like, okay, you think I'm a bitch, then I'm going to be, um, which is not actually a common story that I hear from the majority of highly sensitive people. Um, it's usually like I was really shy. I was really like reserved. I was really soft spoken and that um, meant that I struggled, but it was a different experience for me, which is why I think it took me so long um, to really come to terms with this like inner sensitivity that I have. So yeah, it was, it was a challenge when I was a kid. Um, on more than one occasion, I received really hateful messages from so-called friends making me believe I was worthless. And those were really tra- challenging. And I have to remind myself that just because I had those experiences as a child, right? Like having friends like basically break up with me and believe that I, I wasn't deserving of, of friendships, of love, of care, um, is a really challenging experience for a child. It's like really real. Um, or I was like pushed into lockers and spat on from bullies when I called them out for harassing other students. So high school was a really challenging time for me. Yeah, it was, it was hard because I lacked the skills to show my deep emotions, care and passion for rightness, love and integrity. And it just, it just like rubbed people the wrong way. And I truly began to believe that I was just one of those sassy gals. That's just who I was. I was bitchy and one of those harsh girls that just took no shit, (laughs) which is like so interesting now at this point, um, because Like, let's fast forward 10 years and I've gone through my yoga teacher training. I've grown up 
beginning to learn productive and healthy ways to connect with my bodies and feel the depth of my emotions, as well as vocalize them in ways that fit with the outside world. So after high school, going through this journey, it was, it was beginning. I was starting the shedding process of, oh, I need to be hard on the outside to get my point across. That was beginning to fade. Beginning. It was a weird in-between phase where I felt more connected and loving with myself on the inside, but I was having trouble with living that way on the day-to-day. I still felt, at this point, I felt like I need to wear an armor in the real world, um, and that I, I had to like ignore my emotions and feelings on a day-to-day basis to actually get by. So through this journey, depression became a very large part of my experience feeling at war with the emotions, the sadness of a harsh world, and not being able to do anything about it. Because if I did something about it, then it rubbed people the wrong way, right? That was my experience. If I spoke up, um, I was met with adversity. So, which brings us all the way to the burnout that I spoke about in 2020 in one of the very first episodes. So at this point, Not only was I done with ignoring my body's feelings and desires, I was done with believing that the only way to get through life was to be harsh, fast, loud, and frankly just swallow that that was the way life just had to be. You see, I worked in an environment at the time before I quit my job where I was navigating folks' anger and meanness in a customer service role on a day-to-day basis. People were dumping their problems, their harshness on me, And I just had to swallow it, right? Because that's what you have to do in a customer service role. It's just what you have to do in quotes. (laughs) It's not actually what we should be doing. And I was done with it. I was done with letting that be okay. I was done with being quiet. I was done with letting it be the only way I could keep myself safe from physical harm. Right? Like, there, there aren't just two options. (laughs) You see the injustice. You experience injustice. And the only two options, especially as people who present as female, is either one, be quiet and say nothing, or if you do say something, you do speak up for yourself for what's right, you're a bitch, or your safety is on, on the line. And again, I would like to speak to the privilege that I'm a, I'm a white person, and so this is not a new experience for people of color, for the global majority, um, that speaking up for injustice actually in their bodies would represent lacking in safety and so this is this is not a new experience for those folks and um yeah it gets really tangled really muddled but really those aren't the only two options is what I have learned in my own experience so wrapped up in my shift to prioritizing my self-care which I talk more about in past episodes I was rediscovering the young parts of myself that were celebrated for being the deeply emotional deeply caring deeply aware person that I am before the world decided that being that way and being outspoken and extroverted meant you were a bitch I was softening into who I was loving who I was learning ways to give myself space to navigate and feel those emotions in ways that were healthy and productive so that I could actually do something with them. This is when I began to discover the term highly sensitive. Through listening to Lisa Matthews' Highly Sensitive Soul podcast, listening to Robin's The Empath podcast, moving through Melissa West's yoga playlist for highly sensitive people and learning more about the highly sensitive person book and Dr. Elaine Aaron's work, I saw myself reflected in those traits. I've left, also, I've left all of the links to all those resources I just mentioned in the show notes. I began to feel really seen in these resources. You see, in very simple terms, The traits of being a highly sensitive person, which has been researched and shown to be actual physical differences to a person's makeup, and has been said to represent 15 to 20% of the population, can be summed up in the acronym DOES, D-O-E-S, coined by Dr. Elaine Aaron in their book, The Highly Sensitive Person. So in their words, 
D is for depth of processing. Our fundamental characteristic is that we observe and reflect before we act. We process everything more, whether we are conscious of it or not. O is for being easily overstimulated. Because if you're going to pay more attention to everything, you are bound to tire sooner. E is for giving emphasis to our emotional reactions and having strong empathy, which among other things help us notice and learn. S is for being sensitive to all the subtleties around us. It's often also said that all HSPs are introverted or shy, but that's actually not the truth. In fact, 30% of HSPs are extroverted. I am, (laughs) which is why I think it took me so long to come to terms with being an HSP because it really wasn't in my nature to be shy, quiet, or reserved, as I've just spoken about. So, oh my goodness, I finally began to see the puzzle pieces fall into place. It wasn't that I was too much. It was that I was just super aware and I didn't give myself permission to actually tend to those parts of myself. My body was holding all of these unprocessed, unfelt, untended to processing, emotions, feelings, passions, and was freaking tired of holding on to so much. To feel deeply wasn't a sickness. It wasn't bad. It was a gift. To see hurt in the world and to be so hurt by it that I want to speak up and do something about it is a gift. And to recognize that my being was processing so much more than my peers, which previously meant I had to feel shameful about the fact that I seemed to need so much more downtime, prep time, processing time was no longer something to feel embarrassed about, right? Which is something that I talked about in previous episodes around this realization of, I know I need more time to process stuff and like talking it out and and feeling it like more self-care inherently and that it was a realization for me to be like yeah I do and that's okay I am worthy of that self-care the fact that I can't just quote get over it like everyone else can in certain issues isn't a fault it's a gift the fact that I'm intolerant about certain things isn't a bad thing it's a gift Feeling and noticing to the depth that I do, which does come with its crappy parts like feeling overwhelmed, coming off as too much, feeling exhausted, and navigating periods of darkness also gives me the ability to create true change in the world, to speak up for the little guy, to help the trees, plants, and animals that are hurting right now but can't speak for themselves, to actually be able to listen to my loud intuitive nudges and bring my light to the world to bring to the world the gifts of kindness, collaboration, compassion, and magic, and let those things create the ripple they truly can. And now that I've learned that I can actually speak up and let these depths of emotions and feeling and ability to be aware of a lot actually be vocalized and move through me and blossom out through creativity in ways that are constructive is is beautiful and that I've I've learned that when I speak up and if it rubs people the wrong way that's that's not something I need to hold anymore now I would just like to pause for a moment here I will probably expand more on this next little moment in other episodes because I want because I want to focus mostly on the HSP part of the moonflower in this episode but I've talked here about how the moonflower path is also here to serve the creative and earth-loving folk that's because I deeply believe in the link in all three of those identities as sensitive souls you notice more than the average person and feel very deeply Those are very often the same traits found in creative folk. It's that very deep care, vast awareness, and depth that can lead to beautiful creative endeavors. And that's not only art, that's creativity in its many forms. And we need creativity to be able to come up with creative solutions 
to most in any situations. We can't just keep doing things the way that we've been doing them. And also, vice versa, creativity is a beautiful tool to be used as a self-care practice for sensitive folk. So that's something we will explore further here. Furthermore, when you notice more, empathize more, sense more, you can have a beautiful connection to the magically unseen of the natural world. There is so much magic in the way the natural world communicates the plants, the animals, and even like the way that we sense the energy of the moon, the sun, the stars, that isn't done through words or through the even seen. And that is something HSPs can actually notice and sense and feel and appreciate and actually get great support from. And so I've noticed that for a lot of highly sensitive folk, they feel a deep connection to the natural world. And the more we care about something, right, the more that we care about the earth, the more we have a relationship with something, the more we can do right by it. So we have this unique gift, this unique ability of being able to actually advocate for the natural world. So that's something that I just wanted to mention because there's there's a thread between all three of those identities, I believe. You might identify with one more than the other, but I think you most likely will connect with all three on some level, especially if you listen to these episodes. (laughs) So let's get to the juiciness of this episode. I've shared a little bit more about my experience and you may or may not see similarities in your own experience. And I wanted to share the uniqueness of my experience because I do believe that there is a uniqueness to it with like the the harshness of it that you don't often hear in highly sensitive people's experience. And so I wanted to make it clear that there isn't just one more like shy, quiet experience. <laughs> But as we end, I really wanted to end on a supportive, practical, helpful note. So how does one thrive as an HSP? Well, I'm not saying that I have all of the answers, but I damn sure have a pretty decent scope on things that will help. So first, let's start with, in my experience, the most prominent challenges of being highly sensitive. Well, first, what I said at the beginning, right, that my care and deep desire for kindness and justice, when vocalized in unproductive ways, has come off as being too much or difficult or bitchy. So that has been one of the challenges that I have moved through in my life. But other experiences have been doubting myself, right, which manifests from thinking that the way that I think, the things that I desire the way I feel aren't welcome in the world and manifest into not following through on my desires, not treating myself like the divine being that I am and not being confident in my own abilities. Tiredness. I need a lot of sleep. I believe that most of us need a lot more sleep than we give ourselves and I don't need to tell you what happens when when one doesn't get enough sleep, right? Brain fogginess, not being able to get anything done, irritability, emotional outbursts, and so on and so on. And that tiredness, like I mentioned earlier, comes from the fact that we are processing a lot more than the average person, unconsciously or consciously. Another challenge is getting easily overwhelmed. And this manifests primarily for myself in like giving up a lot whether that be just giving up in arguments if they get too challenging. So this is a challenge. This is something that I'm consistently working through or walking out from a store or an event from overstimulation, which again is something that I'm working through because I don't want to just like give up just because I'm overwhelmed. Giving up on the tiniest stuff, like when I can't open something or fix something or larger stuff, like when I would often want to skip any extracurricular activities as a kid because they were uncomfortable or hard, or it just looks like plain paralysis and not being able to start on something because I'm so overwhelmed by its scope or by the emotions I feel in association with the hurt I'm trying to fix. And these are all challenges that I consistently want to work through as a highly sensitive person because I don't want to give up on life. I want to be here, fully present, 
fully willing to move through all experiences. And the self-care that I practice is what helps me be able to do that effectively. Um, I cry a lot. (laughs) This used to really bother me, um, but it doesn't really anymore. I cry basically like every day. And I've been told in the past that it comes off as manipulative or weak. Um, and it's, it's neither of those things, but, um, it has been a challenge to come to terms with that reality. (laughs) And again, I'm going to talk next about the different ways that you can support yourself in actually navigating those challenges, but let's talk about the beauty that can come from being an HSP. First, I wanted to share, uh, some wisdom that directly was brought to me from my own mom. And I think it because it came from her own mom as well, I think. But the fact that you can feel the depth of sadness or anger or grief from the very top of your head to the tip of your toes means that you also get to feel joy, gratitude, and love from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. To be human is to have the privilege of feeling the depths that is experiencing life and emotions in our body. I am proud and grateful of the fact that when I went to the Alanis Morissette concert and cried the entire time at the sheer joy I felt to be there and witness someone I admire greatly and feel the magic of the crowd singing every word, is I'm proud of that and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the fact that I am overwhelmed with emotions when I experience pleasure or I am able to feel awe for the simplest of things. I am grateful for the fact that when I guide yoga classes, even online classes, I can feel the stress melting off of the student's body and I can tangibly feel their belief in their worthiness and love. It feeds me and helps me create deeper connections in this community. I am proud of the fact that the depth in which I feel and the loudness of my intuitive body helps guide me towards bringing this work and these supportive resources to the world. I am grateful for my deep knowledge of navigating darkness and heaviness because it allows me to learn how to effectively navigate it, find light, and bring that knowledge to the world. I am grateful that I can sense the energies of others in certain situations because it means I can respond accordingly and always strive to ensure I am doing all that I can to help others feel safe and at ease without any words needing to be exchanged. I am grateful for the fact that I move slower or feel like I have to prepare a bit more before entering into situations because it means everything I do is with intention, care, and integrity. Even though at times I need to unlearn the ways I'm not in integrity is uncomfortable, that's okay because I'm no stranger to experiencing uncomfortable emotions and sensations in my body. I am grateful that I can feel the sadness and grief of the earth at times, even to a point that feels absolutely terrifying because I can use that to help fuel the change I know I can create. The fact that you care, that you deeply feel that you notice the unseen is your superpower. Yes, it might feel like darkness sometimes, but it's also such a light and it's a light that is needed. Now, here are some things that will help you thrive as you explore your own highly sensitive self. Now, before I get into this list, honestly, the biggest thing I'm obviously going to say is self-care in all of its forms. This isn't only for HSPs, obviously, (laughs) but it sure as heck is helpful. And in this space, in this community, you will learn how to find the self-care resources that help you. Not from a list of simple tips and tricks that you should do, but discovering the unique ways that your body wants to be cared for, your heart wants to be honored, your mind wants to be nourished. 
embodied, agency-filled, spacious, gentle, cozy, intuitively led, earth-connected self-care, which is what I teach. It's what I guide. It's what I create in the Moonflower Path community space. And so I want to end today's episode with words from a post I created for my Instagram account titled, Nine Things I Wish I Knew About Being a Sensitive Soul Earlier. So number one, being highly sensitive doesn't just mean you're simply overreacting all the time. HSPs have a beautiful capacity to fully feel their emotions. That is a gift that not all folks have. Not being able to give yourself time and space to feel your emotions can lead to unexplainable outbursts in the future or physical health problems. So to be able to feel your emotions accompanied with tools to know how to regulate your nervous system is a necessary and beautiful way of being that you are worthy of. So just because you feel or have been told that you're overreacting doesn't mean that that is truth. Number two, always have sunglasses in my bag. (laughs) Overstimulation is a common occurrence in folks who are highly sensitive, which includes overstimulation to all of your senses. An easy way to quiet down the world a little bit can be to always have sunglasses with you in case indoor lights are too bright or the sun outside is overwhelming. This can go for also having earplugs or a soft sweater in your bag as well to dampen sound and offer your body softness in harsh environments. Number three, you are not dysfunctional. The world has been built with systems of oppression, patriarchy, capitalism, and racism, and these systems inherently squash anything deemed as different out of ignorance, fear, and the need to control for more power. Just because the world wasn't built for you to thrive doesn't mean the way that you are is bad or wrong. It simply means that it is up to you to gently and lovingly learn the ways you can support and care for you and who you are, as well as find communities within which you can feel like you can thrive, as well as do the work that you can to create all spaces and all environments that you are in to ensure that all folks that are different or that feel different also feel welcome. Number four, claiming the label of being highly sensitive doesn't mean you think you're better or more unique than anyone else. This isn't some exclusive club where anybody who thinks they're quote normal can't join. Honestly, I believe that humans are all highly sensitive to some degree. But because of the points made in previous slides, not all folks have given themselves permission to explore that side of themselves. So if labels aren't your thing, but you still relate to being an HSP, great. Or if you feel like you don't resonate with all the traits associated with being HSP, you're still welcome here in this community. Number five. Being a highly sensitive person doesn't mean you're a, quote, sensitive snowflake. Or maybe it does. Look, I get that being a snowflake has been turned into something bad or has become a diss. But honestly, so what? Snow is awesome. (laughs) Isn't it mind-blowing that no two snowflakes are alike? Like, really, when you really think about it, isn't that super freaking cool? So yeah, I am a freaking snowflake. We all are. Even if you haven't shed a single emotional tear in 10 years, you're still magically unique. So like, yeah, you are a snowflake. Amazing. Number six, just because you might feel like you need to be home a bit more than others, or you need lots of rest, or you take life a bit slower than others, doesn't mean you aren't destined for greatness. I could write a damn manifesto about how strongly passionate I am about how true this is. The world is messed up right now. We need your innate ability to empathize, care, feel deeply, create, and rest. These are some of the very things that will help us get out of this mess. Your sensitivity does not have to hold you back from creating impact. Number seven, 
Just because you can care for others all the time doesn't mean you should. Again, you can't pour from an empty cup. Yes, you should always be kind and caring, but not at the expense of your own sanity. Just because you have the ability to care for others and put other people's needs first all the time doesn't mean you have to or you should. You get to decide. You get to set your own boundaries. You are still a kind person if you say no sometimes. Number eight, protecting your energy field might sound like a woo-woo concept, but seriously, it's so important. I don't know about you, but I'm done with wearing armor around my heart. Armor that is so thick that nothing can come in or out. However, being open and receptive 100% of the time isn't realistic either because, well, the world can feel pretty harsh sometimes. So learning ways to protect your energy field so the good stuff can come in, the harsh stuff can come in too without destroying you, and all your goodness can also be sent out is so helpful. So learning more about how you can actually create this like protective bubble around you that isn't armor, but that is like some sort of like field that like can like when the harsh stuff comes in kind of like dissipates and becomes a bit softer and a bit easier to navigate is a really effective tool to have as an HSP. One of my, my friends, um, recently shared the words of envisioning putting on like a magic raincoat, which I really, really appreciated. And number nine, prioritizing self-care isn't indulgent. It's necessary. Okay, so this one might be a bit sticky because there are some conversations being had around the privilege of self-care and that there are many barriers for marginalized folks to access self-care resources. Yes, that is true and leaders in the self-care industry are responsible for changing that. At the same time, I'm not talking self-care that requires extra time or money. I'm talking about self-care that is attainable, accessible, simple, and embodied. It can truly be life-changing. So I would encourage you to listen to some of the past episodes around remembering your inherent worthiness and remembering that you are allowed and that you are permitted to prioritize your self-care, to connect with your body to listen to your body, to honor your intuition. Oh, okay, so this was a really long episode. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. I truly hope that it was supportive. Just to recap on what we explored, what we touched on, I shared a little bit more about my unique experience of discovering being an HSP and what, how like that was kind of a clunky journey. I shared a little bit more about the actual traits of being an HSP and how you might resonate or you might notice some similarities in your own experience, your own makeup. We talked a little bit more about the challenges as well as the beauty of being an HSP And then shared a little bit more about the ways that you can support yourself, the things that you can do, the things that you can remember to help you thrive as a highly sensitive person. I would encourage you again to join the community, come register for the newsletter, explore my YouTube channel, the YouTube videos so you can find more support and the doors open up very soon to the new community space, which is directly created to support you and to help you thrive, my lovely. So stay tuned, stick around, and I'm so grateful to have you here. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Moonflower Path Podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn, and ways that you can find more support from me and this cozy community are all found in the show notes. 
please consider rating, reviewing, and sharing this podcast with a friend. Those are the best ways to show your support for this free and accessible resource. Wishing you a gentle rest of your day, and I look forward to connecting again with you very soon.